I am sick and tired of wimpy Catholicism. Guys, I am fired up. When I start to think about Ash Wednesday, I thought, think about all the things that are going to be said on social media, in homilies. You know, hey guys, don't, don't fast. No, it, scripture doesn't, it doesn't mean actually fast. Just try to be a nice person. Oh, what a bunch of bunk. Like, like don't, don't go too hard. Like, it's going to be really hard. You're going to like give up one meal and it's going to be really tough but try to be patient with people. No, guys, that's weak stuff. I mean, when you look at the scriptures, I mean, do you not believe it? That Jesus fasted for 40 days. You can fast for more than one meal. Now there's the bare minimum. I get it. There's the bare minimum. And a lot of us are inclined to do the bare minimum. But what I'm fired up about is that nobody ever achieved greatness through do, doing the bare minimum. Nobody has ever become a saint because they just simply did the basics. No, we have to dig deep. And if there's anything that I've regretted from the past 40 years is how we've set the bar so low that when folks fall short, they, they you know, just give up meat on Fridays during Lent. Okay, so I slip and fall. No, how about you fast? How about you go 24 hours without eating? How about you feel that discomfort? When we look at the saints of old and the things that they would say, they would say, when well, there is no fasting, there is demons. They would say that you lose the battle against Satan if you're not fasting. That that's what's at stake, guys. When we hear today's second reading, what's at stake is not simply being a nice person. Like we're all gonna go to heaven and if you try a little extra harder, you're gonna be a nicer person. No, we there's a battle against good and evil in the human heart. Your salvation is at stake. We could burn in hell, guys. That's the reality. That's the war. That's the fight. That's what we call to mind when we come to Lent. That we are standing, that there's the possibility of hell. And we hear in today's scripture, Jesus doesn't set the bar like, hey, just be really nice to people. No, he says to love your enemies and look at his life. He suffered and died. He was spit upon. They cursed and reviled him. They treated him. They called him the worst things possible. They hated him. And he said, forgive them, Father, for they know what they would they do. On your bad days, do you have that kind of love? Are you able to dig deep and say, I forgive, I love, even when I don't feel it? even when I feel uncomfortable. That's what we learn in fasting. That's what we learn in prayer. And we know that the saints of old would spend the night in prayer. Have you ever spent the night in prayer? The irony is, how many of us have spent the night watching Netflix? How many of us have binged on Netflix? How many of us have maybe we've, we've done, we've sacrificed incredible things to run a marathon or to run an ultra marathon. And we say, hey, it's great to fast if it's for like health reasons. But yet, when it comes to our spiritual life, we accept such mediocrity. This drives me crazy. I want us to have the same intensity for our spiritual life, the same intensity that we have for sports, the same intensity that we have for our careers, the same intensity that we we encourage in our kids for school. What if we did the same thing for our spiritual life? Guys, there would be no shortage of priests, that's for sure. There'd be no shortages of nuns. There'd be no shortages of vocations. And it's not because the church needs to get with the times. See, that drives me crazy. I remember that when I was a seminarian. And I would quote the the scripture. I'd quote the saints and people like, whoa, back off a little bit. You know, that's in the past. We're now progressive. We don't need all of that. We've got psychology. We've got self-help. We don't need fasting. We don't need to feel bad about ourselves. We don't need to meditate on heaven and hell. Those things are going to really ruin our day. No, we're, we're, we're more enlightened now. What has that gotten us the past 40 years? If there's one thing that's come to light the past two years, is that spirit of mere mediocrity. On the surface, it may look friendly and it may look nice and cuddly, but below is rotten to the core. Haven't we discovered that the past few years? That all that time when it was just be nice, just be friendly to everybody, it was hiding, it was a veneer under which was a cesspool of sexual immorality, of all kinds of licentiousness. That's what we have to confront. We have to confront not just that evil is out there, but evil is in our individual hearts. We have to go into the desert and fight the devil and conquer him, not on our own. We can't do it without God. That's the whole lesson of the Old Testament. That's the whole lesson of the scripture. We need God to transform our hearts. We have to surrender. We have to die to self. We have to let go of everything keeping us from being Christ-like. So let's get fired up this Lent. I mean, I don't know what it's going to look like for you, but whatever, whatever you feel called to do, 
take a step further. My goal this Lent, my goal every Lent is to be uncomfortable as possible every single day to try to maximize my discomfort. And I would encourage you guys to do the same. That's gonna look different for each one of us. But embrace that discomfort. Give yourself a bad day. Give yourself a bad month where you feel uncomfortable as much as possible. And then in the middle of that say, I choose to love. I believe, I trust, I long for heaven. I don't like this world. I wanna be with God for all eternity. That's what the scripture speaks of. That holy dissatisfaction with the world that opens us to God's grace. So this Lent, let's dig deep. Let's embrace, go one step further, embrace a little bit more discomfort, fasting, penance, almsgiving. Let us extend ourselves and let our capacity to love be stretched this length. Amen.